Hey, what's up? I'm back. This is my one week update. It's actually day nine, I think. Um, so it's a little bit over a week, but I've had some big gains, some big progress in the, in the last two days. So I wanted to wait and make a video now to see a better view of what's going on. Uh, my game ready came in a while ago. This thing is awesome. I made the mistake of not agreeing to this right before the surgery. Boom, get this, nothing compares to it. I tried other ice machines. This sleeve also gives you compression, which squeezes in, feels awesome. Um, do that a couple times a day, maybe even at night while you're sleeping. The reservoir is a little smaller and uh, a little bit more finicky, but it's also more adjustable and it works better, you know? It's like a, it's like a luxury car, like a BMW or something. When it works, it works really good. But it can be a little finicky sometimes. You just gotta you gotta know how to use it. Um, updates for me: taking a shower got a lot easier. Um, bending my knee got easier. Some of my swelling has gone down. Finally, turns out I'm a big sweller by nature. Um, now my swelling. If you want to zoom in, you can see uh, I've got a lot smaller up here. Still doing my measurements. These have gone down a lot. I naturally have huge calves, so they still look pretty big, right? But this is where most of the swelling is. At, uh... <laughs> yeah, look at that. Yeah, this is, this, this part's really holding me back here on the outside. So, uh, at day seven, exactly one week after the surgery, I had my first insurance-covered PT session. And, uh, this isn't my first surgery, so I know how it goes. I picked a pretty decent place as far as insurance covered PT places goes. And it was, you know, pretty basic. They rubbed me really lightly a little bit, put the goniometer up to my leg to see how close to straight I could get, how much I could bend my leg. And they're like, okay, we gotta get you to 90 by like four weeks, I think. And, uh, and they, they showed me, oh, I should be doing quad sets at home, which is where you flex your quads and kind of push your knees into a, a towel or whatever. She watched me do it and she was like, yeah, okay, you know what to do, do those at home. Um, that was pretty much it. I'll see you in a couple weeks because there's not much else you can do right now. Just continue with these, continue using the CPM machine. That'll, uh, that'll passively bring your knee into more flexion. Um, I don't take the, uh, I don't take the measurements on the CPM too seriously because it's kind of inaccurate, but I just make sure like I'm constantly bumping it up each time. And that's how I know I'm making progress, getting more knee flexion. The biggest thing holding me back is that, that, uh, that fluid and that inflammation, like I said. So then yesterday I paid out of pocket. I went to go see my guy, one of the best PTs that I know. Um, he also gave me a rub down, but he, it was a more specific lymphatic drainage um, massage. Elevated my foot and he explained to me that when I do stuff like this, I need the foot above my heart to get this fluid back, draining back into the, where the lymph node is, high on my leg. I need to keep my leg up the whole time as somebody else is just, you know, moderate pressure, just pulling that fluid down, starting from top, coming along the knee, and then coming down my quad, and gently just keep guiding those fluids down. I watched my swelling go down in front of me while he was giving me this, this 20 minute lymphatic massage. Uh, at the end I did a lot of ankle pumps, try to get whatever is left in there, like get it moving. Um, and then we started doing some quad sets, and he noticed immediately when I was doing my quad sets that I was just squeezing my butt and I was pretty much cheating. I wasn't getting my quads to turn on which is the most important part of the quad set. That's why you're doing it, right? We need to get these muscles going again. Um, so I had to, you know, really focus with my brain, not squeeze my butt and just, I would do a couple on this side and that would help my brain remember how to do it properly. And then I would start doing it better on this side. And I still can't really get my bottom half of my leg to lift off the ground. because There's too much swelling here to lock my knee out completely, but I did start feeling a little bit, you see that? That started jumping, 
and I started getting a little bit of a definition in my rectus right there. Then once I got that going a bunch of times, now you can see that's a quad set, yeah? My knee's going down, this is tightening up a little bit, not great. And my butt's not squeezing to help out. Once I got that going reliably, then we started doing some leg lifts, which I'm going to show on the ground. I'm sure your PT is probably going to tell you to do some leg lifts as well. Uh, but just keep that in mind, right? Lifting the foot above the heart is very important to actually get that drainage and taking your time to do these massages, right? Starting down by the foot and always going back towards the lymph node, yeah? And towards the heart, coming back down. Take your time. I would do that every day if you could, maybe every other day, but you need somebody to help you to do it for you, right? Because you can lay back, get that heart down a little bit lower. I walked out of there, already had more movement in my knee, felt a lot better, uh, felt a lot more stable. Boom, I couldn't do this two days ago. I couldn't just get off the chair like this with my knee bent this much, yeah? That's huge. I can stand up way more normally. I'll show you as I get on the ground. Uh, I, can, I can actually get down on the ground different ways now too. I can bend my knee a little bit more and I guess I still have to go this way. Right now I'm about actively almost 45 degrees and two days ago when I saw that first PT it was about 36. So I've already gone up 10 degrees and that's just from using the CPM, doing the drainage massages, elevating, you know, and doing these exercises. So a good way to set up your workout program, um, do this. The paper that I got with this said two hours sessions, three times a day. So that's six hours total a day. And I was like, that's a lot. <laughs> it's, you're gonna get pretty uncomfortable. Your back's gonna hurt laying on the ground, or maybe you can do it in your bed, I guess. I don't know. I don't want to stay in the bedroom for six hours a day. Um, but yeah, I, I cut it down to like, depending on what I'm doing or how I feel, an hour, sometimes even 30 minutes, um, if I know I'm gonna do some stuff afterwards. So I'll put the ice sleeve on with the compression for five to 10 minutes, you know, just to bring things down, kill the pain a little bit. Then I'll, and I'll hop on here for a half hour to an hour, and uh, it, it's kind of a good pain. Like you'll feel the pressure in your knee. Make sure you don't go too far so you don't have any sharp pain. Um, but after a while, then you get off of there and you're like, oh, I feel like a lot more mobile. Then I go into kind of assisted, active knee flexion where I lay down. And I, and I, this is also a hamstring set. So I'm trying to fire up these hamstrings to pull my heel in towards my butt because you want to wake these guys back up too. So I'm concentrating on that and I'm assisting just a little bit with my hand because at the end, I want to try and pull it in a little bit more. Hold for five seconds. And then slide back out. Two sets of 10. That's what I was prescribed. I'm not sure what you're gonna get from your doctor, but uh, that's a good thing to do right after the machine because you've, it's, um, one of, one of the uh, mobility systems that I'm uh, that I'm trained in works off a similar pr principle. This is passively making more space in your joint. Immediately afterwards, while that space is open and while your brain is open to it, it's good to actively work within that space. That'll get you there faster. You know, that's a good principle for stretching in general. You know, passively get into a spot that you're not used to being in, and then start putting some resistance and some load on it in that position. It'll remember it, right? Um, oh, you can also use this for your, while you're still down here. The other big one that I felt a lot of progress in is the quad sets from here and then the leg lifts. So the same thing, I'll work on really, I'll pull my pants up like this. Sometimes I'll even like smack myself, like try and dial in. I really want to see at least that rectus femoris, right? Cause that's, that's the one that goes across all, both, uh, both joints hip and knee, it goes all the way across. That's one of your major quad flexor, there you go. Get it fired up. Once I get it fired up, try and push my knee to the ground a little bit. I think it's a little, a little tired too. I went really hard today. I worked out really hard today. Okay. 
good. I'll do a bunch of those, and then I will start to add in the leg lift. So you can also assist yourself with this. I try not to assist myself at the beginning. Uh, also, if this is way too hard for you, you can put your brace on while you do this. That'll add a lot of stability and make it a lot easier to lift your leg. I, just, I was graduated to this earlier today. We'll see if I can do it now. So I squeeze, right, nice and tight, and lift. I'm, I'm just holding the leash right now. My leg is doing everything. Two days ago, I couldn't even lift my leg on my own. <laughs> and I still don't see that like I want to. Ah, there we go. There we go, I feel a little bit. Yep, I feel a little bit. Sometimes it takes me like a whole set of 10. Oh, it's starting to blade up, you see it? It's hard. It's really disconnected neurologically. Yeah, like I said, sometimes it'll take me a whole set of 10 just to really get that fired up. And then the next two sets I consider like my actual working sets. But it's, it's been a bit of a journey, you know? All right. I can actually walk around now without my brace. Still a little bit sketchy. <laughs> I can't fully lock out my knee the way I want to. You know, I can't bend my knee as far as I want to, but look at this. Two days ago, you saw me when I was trying in the shower. I was like, I don't know if I can stay standing up in the shower. Now look at me, I'm just walking around the house. I feel some quad activation. I was feeling so good this morning after my, uh, my CPM and my leg lifts and all that stuff. I was like, you know what? I'm doing a workout, upper body workout. I put the brace on, but while I was doing the upper body workout, I was doing a, I was doing a, like dumbbell rows, pull ups, um, a bunch of other stuff with the weights, and I could feel all the muscles in my quads starting to light up, like to stabilize. It felt awesome. Took the brace off, and I was walking around most normal. I've walked out. I've walked. I've walked around since the surgery. It was very uplifting, and uh, really showed me up. Then I took a shower afterwards. One foot in, boop, second foot in, pretty awesome. So I wanted to share this joy with you guys. Uh, I know other than that, like not much else has really changed that much. I really gotta get the swelling down. That's the name of the game right now. Uh, the PT that I saw yesterday, the one that really helps me the most is like keep working on getting that swelling down because your regular PT, the one the insurance pays for, the one who has four other clients at the same time as you, all they have on their paper by this week, you gotta get to this degree, you know, flexibility in your knee. They're gonna get you there one way or the other. And 20 years ago when I broke my knee, I was just having flashbacks about this uh, yesterday because I kind of blocked it out of my mind. It was me and this other like old guy who got a knee replacement just screaming at the top of our lungs. I don't wanna scare you, but if you work on your flexibility and you get this range of motion on your own, you won't have to deal with this. But if you don't, if you're too lazy, you keep putting out like, oh, I don't feel like doing exercises today, and you don't really push yourself, they're gonna push it for you, and it hurts. <laughs> it hurts a lot, because they have protocols, you know, they have their quota, or their, their, uh, their uh, uh, number that they have to get to. Um, anything else change? I think that's it. I still, like, even walking around the house, most of the time I'll still put the brace on, because it's just, it's more stable, you know, and this, this gets tiring really fast. There's a lot of swelling in there. These muscles are still like not strong enough. Um, but it's the past two days, I saw a lot of progress each day. I feel a lot more normal. I'm at this in-between period now when I, when I go outside, I take the crutches with, but like I'd rather not use them, you know? They're kind of more annoying than anything. Because once I put the brace on, I feel very stable, but the brace is keeping my legs straight. So I'm like, peg legging to walk. And now that I got this stuff starting to work, it wants to actually take a regular step inside the brace. So now my leg is like fighting against the brace <laughs> while I'm walking. It's very weird. I'm like in between everything, all these props. Um, but I'm just gonna take it as a win because you know I can feel stuff going on. I feel a lot more normal. Um, so we got a long way to go. It's only been one week, but it's already going better than I expected. Uh, but if you can't afford it, please, rent that CPM machine, 
rent that game ready for as long as you can. I feel like I'm going to be using that game ready for a couple more weeks still. This is going to be swelling for at least a month, I think. Uh, yeah, that's it. You know, get lots of sleep, eat lots of fruits and vegetables, and uh, don't sweat it too much. It's going to be okay. <laughs>